So Devil May Cry is pretty cool, and believe it or not, I don't just like it for the reasons that are very apparent and obvious when you look up anything on the game. No, I am one of those people who actually enjoys Devil May Cry for an aspect that I personally think is very underappreciated. It's story. Now, I know what you're thinking. There are many people out there who believe that Devil May Cry's story is uh, too campy and stupid and just outright bad. And I want to let you know that those people are stinky and mean and fuck you. What a punk. No, as far as I'm concerned, the Devil May Cry series is batting about 2 for 5 on the amazing scale and 1 out of 5 on the pretty good scale, but could be better. Uh, the other two are uh, a little bit complicated, but that's a topic for another day. Kill me! There's a lot to love about this series, but personally I think the most powerful aspect of it is the main theme that permeates throughout the entire thing. The theme that no matter who you are or what you are, your heart and your soul will carry you through the end of the day and help you to overcome any challenge or tribulation you find yourself tasked with. And even if you don't start with one, you can always have one. No one is below the ability to grow a heart. This is shown throughout the very impetus of the series with the eponymous Sparta, who we learn about in the very first game, in the very first scene. It's pretty great. One hell of a message, I say. It's odd to find a game with such a positive message in this day and age, but here we are. And god is it fucking wonderful. But despite how much I love this series, one aspect that I feel hasn't been explored nearly as much as it could is the relationship between the two main characters of the very first game of the series. Those being Dante and Trish. Their relationship starts out obviously within the first game, with Trish being a creation made by the demon emperor Mundus to look exactly like Dante's mother in an attempt to lure him to the island that he resides on. The castle is above this cliff. Come on, let's go! Throughout the game, Trish follows Dante's exploits throughout the castle, basically seeing if she can gauge the power of him, and eventually, despite the fact that she was made to help Mundus kill Dante, she eventually ends up falling for him. What 
The first time that she actually sees just how strong he is is in the Phantom fight, where he pretty definitively wins against a monster that she clearly thought would actually win. And of course, the second time that she actually starts to be swayed by Dante is during the final Griffin fight. When Dante takes great issue with Mundus brutally slaughtering his own cohort, who was a very loyal servant to him even to the moment that he died. Maybe it was too easy for you. Mundus. His heinous ways make me sick, killing even his own, like they were nothing. He's the one that took the life of my mother, my brother, I'm sure. My mother used to always tell me that my father was a man who fought for the weak. He had courage and a righteous heart. In the name of my father, I will kill Mundus. After this, Trish starts to be swayed, seemingly by Dante's own sense of honor and righteousness. The final time is, of course, during the final nightmare fight, where Trish tries to kill Dante alongside the weapon, but Dante ultimately comes out victorious and even saves Trish. Whenever Trish asks Dante why it is that she even did so, he responds with this. Even if Dante himself knows that she's a demon, she still wears the face of his mother, a mother that he could never bring himself to kill, even in a figurative sense. And this slowly starts to sway Trish as well. Dante! Don't come any closer, you devil! You may look like my mother, but you're nowhere close to her! You have no soul. You have the face, but you'll never have her fire! Until eventually things come to a head in the fight with Mundus, and she ends up saving Dante, and of course, quote-unquote, sacrificing herself in the process. This then allows Dante to unlock the power sealed within the Sparta Sword, giving him the final edge he needs to defeat Mundus. It's pretty fucking great. Of course, at the end of the game, Trish and Dante have a small exchange where they find out that Trish is doing something that only a human can do. Only something that someone with a heart can perform. She's crying. She loves. And, of course, the two escape, living, quote-unquote, happily ever after. Or do they? Throughout the series, they make it a point to show that Trish is at least implied to be attracted to Dante. Not necessarily as a familial love, but something greater. Of course, why wouldn't she be? She showed this pretty clearly back in Double May Cry 1, but there's just one problem. They also showed throughout the series that Dante's feelings for Trish aren't exactly mutual. I don't doubt in the slightest that he actually loves her, but of course not romantically. Because even if Trish is her own person, she still has the face of his mom. And of course, he can't love her like that. And so this causes a few japes and snides throughout the series, as Trish laments the fact that she's unable to get with Dante.
We're just getting to the best part. I didn't know you were into that kind of thing. So, are we getting paid for this? Don't worry. I'll pay you when we get back. All right. Then let's blow this joint. Well, at least someone knows how to get the girl. Yeah. Apart from little things like this here and there, there's not really actually much in the way of exploration between the dynamic between these two. I mean, it seems like a pretty decent basis for some great character work and conflict between the two. Trish loves Dante romantically because of, well, he's fucking Dante, but of course Trish can't. He still loves her, but there's no way that he could love her in the way that she wants. Were I to see a Devil May Cry 6, this is definitely one of the things that I would want expanded upon and explored more thoroughly. The idea that these two care about each other, but have conflicting views on how much they care for one another. And hopefully it would in the end conclude with the fact that they both agree that they do love each other, just in different ways and that Trish gets to be her own person and doesn't have to be bound to Dante, hopefully eventually going on to find someone else that she can love just the same, or not, depending on how things go. There's a lot of ways that I feel as if this dynamic can be explored, but unfortunately there's barely been any tapping into it at all, so I hope that Itsuno and his team give this particular pairing the space and dedication that it deserves. I know that this was a random video, and it probably came out of bumfuck nowhere if you were actually subscribed to me in any way, shape, or form, but it was basically my own way of trying to dabble into video essays and the like. I know that I want to make them, and I enjoy making them to an extent, but uh, I suppose I just wanted to test the waters and get one out there, so why not start with something that's a little more bite-sized instead of fucking massive. If you enjoyed this small video that was essentially just me rambling on to my microphone for about seven fucking minutes, then uh, I hope I'll see you around in the future. That's gonna be it for this one, though. Have a good day. The final straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, was during the final Nightmare fight. Trish attempts to kill Nightmare alongside... Nightmare? She tries to kill Nightmare? <laughs> what the fuck? Eventually, hopefully, coming into a con Hopefully? God fucking damn it, Lucy.